In modern, Eye of Ugin is banned. <laughs> Ancestral Visions is unbanned. Yeah! Sword of the Meek, of all things, is unbanned. Yeah! And in vintage, Lodestone Golem is restricted. <laughs> Okay, I want to dive in right now. Let's go. Alright, so first, just full disclosure, I was completely wrong. Completely wrong. On the record, I said it's going to be Eldrazi Temple that gets banned, not Eye of Ugin. And I gave a number of reasons for why. Before I go into that though, let me give you the explanation given on the announcement page. Here we go. Since Pro Tour Oath of the Gatewatch, Eldrazi decks have been dominating the modern tournament environment. At the Pro Tour, Eldrazi were represented in six of the top eight decks, mm -hmm, including Tal's winning deck. On the weekend of March 6, three modern Grand Prix were held. There were 24 players who had top eight performances, 14 of whom were playing Eldrazi, including two of the three winning decks. Okay, so we're on the same page there. Results on Magic Online are quite similar. Eldrazi decks are running rampant. The format is very imbalanced, and far from a healthy mix of competitive decks. Okay, so no disagreement there. Here's where it gets tricky. While the Eldrazi decks have a lot of powerful cards, the powerful draws are generally based on the mana acceleration from Eldrazi Temple and Eye of Ugin. Rather than ban multiple creatures, we find it preferable to ban a single land. We made our choice by examining how one would build a deck and how it would play with the land that remains legal. Alright, here we go. Time for disagreement. If Eldrazi Temple is banned and Eye of Ugin is legal, the deck focuses on playing multiple lower casting cost Eldrazi per turn. A discount of 2 mana for each Eldrazi becomes a discount of 4 or more over the course of a turn. The deck becomes more explosive, more focused on a single build, and the powerful draws are still not interactive. Okay, I actually don't agree with that, and here's why. If you only have the ability to put four Eye of Ugins in your deck, then in a 60 card deck with an opening hand of seven cards, you have a 39.6% chance of having at least one Eye of Ugin. Now even that's a little bit problematic, but I'll get to that in just a second. So that means that you have about a two in five chance of having your mana acceleration. That's it. That means that you are more likely to have a hand, even if you have the ramp or the the fast creatures, you're going to have to play them at a fair pace. Say I have a hand of Eldrazi Mimic, Endless One, uh, Thought Not Seer, that sort of thing. That's my hand. But I don't have Eye of Ugin. That is a terrible tempo deck, essentially. Not even a tempo deck, because you're not doing very much interaction in the deck. I'm sorry, but Simeon's Spirit Guide does not cut it. On the other hand, if you do have Eye of Ugin, if you have two Eyes of Ugin, you don't get any additional benefit from the second one. It's not even diminishing returns, it's completely diminished returns. It's not like, say, uh, Caracas, for instance. That's a legendary land, you can tap it for white, or use its, activated, its other activated ability, play another one, state-based actions kill it, and then you can tap for another mana. You can't do that with Eye of Ugin. You get two. You don't get to generate more as a result. So that means that any additional ones that you have in your hand are kind of dead. Not really, obviously. Your eye could get ghost quartered, now you can play the other one. Uh, tech edge, whatever the case may be. That, that is certainly a thing. But, it doesn't really do all that much. You get diminishing ret Now, yes, I hear the counter argument. If you do have an eye of Ugin, or excuse me, yes, an eye of Ugin, then Eldrazi Mimic, Eldrazi Mimic, Endless One, Thought not see her on the next turn. Boom. Done. Um, that's really unlikely. That is really unlikely. Now, in order to get four mana without Eldrazi Temple and four mana, you would have to have. Actually, you wouldn't be able to play that Thought Not Seer, would you? Because let's say you got the Urborg out on turn two. So, uh, I have Ugin on turn one, Urborg on turn two, Urborg taps for black. Ibugan taps for black. You still haven't made any colorless mana. You just reduced the cost by two. Thought Not Seer's not played. Not off that. Oh my goodness. I. 
I don't agree with this decision, but but they do address the next side of it. Let's give them give them credit. Here we go. If Ive Ugin is banned and Eldrazi Temple is legal, the mana supports a more diverse set of builds. There still is a small percentage of games with two Eldrazi Temples powering out huge plays. However, there are more games where only one temple is drawn and the deck is powerful yet beatable. So basically the argument that they're making here is it's okay if the deck has two mana, if it has an additional mana, if it's one mana ahead of curve. That, that's fine. That's perfectly okay. Uh, and maybe they've done a lot more testing. Maybe they run analy- well, I'm sure they run analytics all day, every day, to try to figure this out. And maybe they've done enough testing to know that if you have one additional mana, that's perfectly fine. As opposed to I have Ugin generating a lot more extra mana. On your opening turn, it could make nothing. It could make 12 mana, potentially. You know, we could see in the absolute craziest draw ever, Mimic, 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 Endless One, Endless One, or something crazy like that, and then swing 12 next turn. But what they're saying essentially is, we don't want there to even be a chance of a super explosive draw like that. I think, I, I disagree strongly with that. I think that because it's less likely that you'll be, have even one of these in a given opening hand, in a 60 card deck, 7 cards in the hand, it's just, it's not worth it. it it's relying on... Remember, there's a reason why Summer Bloom, or any combo deck for that matter, has a consistency problem. It's because your Oops I Win card even if it's a 4 of in the deck, it's still only a 4 of in the deck. You don't even have a 50% chance of having it. And so you can just dirtle and dirtle and dirtle. Okay, but enough about that. Here's another reason why I was sure, I was so sure, that they were going to ban Temple instead of Ayavugan. And they addressed this specifically, so credit to them for doing that. We also consider that Eye of Ugin is played in other decks, most notably Tron decks using Urza's Power Plant and similar lands. While the Eye does add a lot of late game power to the deck, the core gameplay of the deck, casting large threats with the Tron lands, remains intact. It is regrettable that banning Eye of Ugin also impacts these Tron decks, but weighing everything in consideration, we feel this is the correct solution to the Eldrazi Menace and makes Modern the most fun overall. Okay, so I was also wrong, <laughs> because I was so sure that if they banned uh, Eldrazi Temple and left Eye of Ugin, that Tron would have a huge seat at the table, because it still runs Eye of Ugin just as a one-of, basically just as something that they can get with Expedition Map or Sylvan Scrying, and they can go and find late game threats. I need to not lose, let me get Platinum Angel. I need to win, let me get... Emrakul the Eons Torn! But no, that's not what they went for. And they, they were cognizant of it. Of course they were cognizant of it. They're not dumb. But they're basically saying, it is worth it to... We think that this will not only hamper the Eldrazi deck more than banning Eldrazi Temple, but we are willing to cut out Tron, or Gimbit, I guess, to nerf Tron, in order to do so. I don't agree. I'm sorry. But I don't agree. But enough about that. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. What does this mean for you? Well, it means you can still play Eldrazi. You won't be nearly as explosive. You won't be as consistent, admittedly. But yes, you can certainly play Eldrazi. You're not going to be able to power out really explosive kills, so I'm sorry. Your Reality Smasher is probably not a 4 of in the deck. Just, just in case probably not going to be running four up. Now, that being said, I'm about to be proven wrong once again because Ancestral Visions is unbanned. Oh my god! Uh, this was... I saw... Go away. Shoot. Shoot. <laughs> I saw Ancestral Visions as having a non-zero but extremely low chance of ever being unbanned. I never said this on camera, but I put it at less at 10% or fewer that it would ever be unbanned. Ever. Uh, 
Part of the reason is because it does have to compete with Bloodbraid Elf, and they admit this. With the current ban list, including Bloodbraid Elf, the types of Cascade cards usually played with Ancestral Vision are not available. So I'm sorry, Bloodbraid Elf fanboys. If you were hoping that that card gets unbanned, I'm sorry. This is sort of the death knell. I, I think the only way that we could possibly see Bloodbraid Elf getting unbanned is if they say oops and reban Ancestral Visions, which opens the space to put in another Cascade creature like Bloodbraid Elf. And that still requires Jund to not be Tier 1 because they don't want to push it even more over the top with Bloodbraid Elf. I'm sorry, but as long as Jund is up there, you aren't getting a Bloodbraid Elf reprint. And this hurts me too, I had promo Bloodbraid Elves. I guess it doesn't hurt me anymore, I don't have them anymore. Okay, enough about that. Can you tell I'm having fun? I'm having so much fun. But they do bring up a good point in the announcement. Here, let me give it to you. We also looked at our ban list for cards that could increase the richness of the format. Currently, the format tends to favor aggressive decks and quick kill combo decks. We looked for cards that tend to work best in slower decks. While there are some control decks that we use Ancestral Visions, it is an underplayed portion of the metagame. To allow for an increase in the number of blue-based control or attrition decks, we are unbanning Ancestral Vision. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm never picking up that card again. It is going to be way too expensive, I imagine, for as long as it's still legal in the format. But yeah, if you wanted to play Control, here's your answer. Now this card, I think, is so, so underrated in this format. Now that it's unbanned. Even now that it's unbanned, and here's why. You don't even have to cascade into the card. Remember, Modern is a format that is known, it is defined by its turn 4 speed limit. You are not supposed to be able to kill, or even have your fundamental turn, I think is how they put it. You aren't supposed to be able to have your fundamental turn before turn 4 consistently without some means of interacting with it. That's why Infect, for instance, even though it can get turn 2 and 3 kills, isn't banned, because you can interact with it. That's why Grishol brand is not banned. It's because it's not consistent enough. But here we are with Ancestral Vision. Suspend 4. If you can make it past the fundamental turn, which is certainly something that's doable in Modern because of the speed limit that hampers the speed of so many decks, then congratulations, draw 3 cards, you are now the late game champion. The deck essentially just becomes, and, and I say the deck, there are so many different kinds of decks that can do this, but stall the game until Ancestral Vision can resolve using cards like Mana League, like Remand, uh, any sort of kill spell, hand attack, whatever the case may be. Stall the game until you get to that point, draw three cards, refill on your gas, and then go to town. Your late game threats don't have to be, I mean, come on, you're drawing three cards. You, you can pick any threat you want, I'm being facetious, of course, but not too, too much, actually. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited, I am so, can you tell? Can you tell? I'm, I'm excited to start playing with uh, Baneslayer Angel, I want to play with, uh, I don't know, Geist of Saint Traft as a win condition. I want to play with all the control win conditions that I've been dying to get out there. But I just haven't been able to. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be great. Can you tell? I'm not even a blue mage. Blue is not my favorite color. But I want to. Okay. Between the two of us, between the however many people are in the view count of us, I'm actually excited to play it in a Polymorph deck because uh, I play my Polymorph deck like a control deck. Uh, Cryptic Command and now Ancestral Vision, uh, Rune Chanter's Pike, sort of a tempo game plan in there. Look, I'm just excited that I have an, another way to make it in the late game with this deck. But I was at least giving Ancestral Vision a chance of coming back. I gave sort of the meek a 0% chance of ever getting unbanned. And now I, here I am with my foot in my mouth. 
Okay, no, not none of that. <laughs> Alright, but in all seriousness, Sword of the Meek, come on! Uh, okay, so, I am not aware of any mana-efficient infinite combos that you can play in Modern with Sword of the Meek. That's not what we care about. What we do care about is that Thopter Foundry is still legal in the format. And Thopter Foundry does kind of break this. You can't go infinite, but getting a 1-1 one, one flyer and gaining one life every time you use the ability? I'm sorry, but that's really, really strong. Now, in a, again, in a format where there's a speed limit on you, you have the turn 4 speed limit, they have a decent amount of time to set up sort of the Meek Thopter Foundry. And it doesn't take that much to slow the format down. Not really, no. Because the ban list has already slowed it to such an extent, you don't have to last that long in order to get this out. Sword of the Meek is really good. I strongly suggest you try. If you have the cards, if you don't have the cards, I don't know if it's quite strong enough that you should just go out and get them now that I'm sure that the price has done this. But if you have them, I dare you to try. It's probably really str it, I'm not in camp they're going to be banned in three months. I don't know. On the one hand, I gave it a 0% chance of ever coming back, and I am predicting that it's going to be a significant portion of the metagame. I'm arguing with myself here, though. There's no Stoneforge Mystic in the format, so it isn't that easily broken. Do you run it in a Fabricate shell to try to find the combo more readily? Do you just have it as an oops, I win in a control deck? I don't know the answer. Maybe I'm completely wrong, and I've already been wrong, what is it now, like three times today? So I'm not even going to try. Nope, I'm done. You guys, you can have it. I'm not making a prediction. Fine, I'll make a prediction. Ah, uh, not getting banned in three months. Not. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but here we go. You have it here, for the record, not getting banned. I don't think it's quite that good. But hey, your blue-white control deck just got a whole lot better. Give it a shot. Lastly, Lodestone Golem. Okay, I know, this is vintage. A lot of you are turning off right now. I won't be too, too long. Let me just give you a second. I like to think of Vintage as having this interesting spectrum on a scale of workshops to dredge. Maybe the other way around. Uh, workshops tells you you aren't playing Magic. I'm sorry, but I'm going to power out this Sphere of Resistance, this Lodestone Golem, this Chalice of the Void, whatever the case may be. I'm going to power this card out that says, no, you don't play Magic, I play Magic, end of story. And thanks to cards like Mishra's Workshop and the Moxen, it can do that extremely efficiently. And as a result, it's a disproportionately large part of the metagame. That's why they restricted Lodestone Golem. They wanted to make sure that it wasn't too much of the metagame. On the other end, you have Dredge, which doesn't necessarily stop you from doing anything. It just does not care. It's the Honey Badger. Honey Badger don't give a <laughs> Alright, so the reason for that is that Dredge does not have to cast a single spell the entire game, and yet they can still win. You can go turn one Bazaar of Baghdad. Okay, well, you'll kill me on turn two, maybe turn three. Fine, let's go to the next game. If they do cast a spell, it's Dread Return. Suppose you counter that. They still sacked three Narco Amoebas and made nine zombies as a result, thanks to Bridge from Below, and then they're just gonna kill you on the next turn anyway, so... It kind of doesn't matter. Your counter spells don't do anything. And then everywhere in the middle is a variety of blue control decks. Oath of Druids, uh, Gushbind, these Mentor decks, Delver, Merfolk. They all fall somewhere in the middle of that spectrum. But, frankly, neither of the two <laughs> ends are very fun. They don't create very interactive games. And so even if you don't think that Workshops is too strong, and I'm not sure where I fall on that, but even if you don't think it's too strong, it's not very fun. There's a reason why Eggs was banned in Modern. It's not because the deck was ridiculously OP or anything like that. 
it's because it wasn't fun. There's a reason why there's been discussion about banning Sensei's Divining Top in Legacy. It's because it's slow and not very fun. I'm sorry, but that's something that they actively take into consideration when they're making these ban lists. What can you do? Alright, so those are my thoughts. Feel more than free to disagree, include a comment or two or ten. I say that, now there's gonna be a flame war. Ah, dang it. What have I done? Feel more than free to tar and feather me for getting my prediction utterly wrong. In my defense, I was far from the only one that thought that it would just be Temple and not Eye of Ugin. And I did not suspect that anything was getting unbanned. And here I am, eating my words. Oh well, such is life. I guess I'll see you later then, YouTube. Take care, bye-bye.